Good job. And here's my notes. He said, you haven't been speaking long. Maybe one day you'll do it without notes. Today, 27 years ago, a 34-year-old guy started Relationship Church. Can you believe that? And I'm still using uh, notes, so I don't think you ever quite get away from it. And so, uh, but yeah, I can't believe we've been here 27 years. It's amazing. What a journey. I don't know what I would have thought 27 years in the future was. I mean, I I do know what I thought, but it wasn't what we have here. And this is better. God just makes things happen, and and, uh, and you get revelation. What you start doing something, what you end up, it's usually different than what you started doing. And you don't, but God gets you moving. And he gives you further revelation on the inside. And I'm so excited about what we've done here as a group for 27 years. A lot of seeds, a lot of places. Some things that were cool in the, uh, uh, in the pastors group me this week. Michael, uh, well, it was first started with Evan. Evan goes on Sunday. I got up and the Lord said prophesy over everybody on the front row. So he prophesied over everybody on the front row. And then Michael Watkins didn't know Evan was doing that. He jumped in. He said, the Lord told me to do the same thing. And I prophesied over everybody on the front row. I think Evan had eight. He had like 35 or 25 or something. I don't remember. More on his front row. And I said, the Lord told me to do that same thing. So I did it. But there was nobody on the front row. So we just kept going on. (laughs) True story. (laughs) He actually didn't tell me to prophesy on the front row. But it's true. There's nobody ever on the front row. It's sort of the buffer. I don't know if I spit or what it is. Or if it just, you know, you can't get quite that close to whatever it is. But uh, I said, the Lord would have never asked me that because it, maybe the back row. And if we did the back row, we would really, uh, <laughs> we would really get somewhere. I tell you what, we just put marriage series that I did for a few weeks on hold. We got halfway through the 10 truths. And because uh, I tell you what, the Lord just can't, he just not letting me get re- released now. So that may happen somewhere in the future. So I'm not even bringing it up anymore. But uh, several weeks ago, the Lord said, I am calling my bride. Turn over to Matthew 25, verse 1. It's a verse that we've looked at many times about the ten uh, virgins. He is doing this thing, man. This is what I taught up at Living Word about a month ago. I'm going to teach Lord willing. A lot of times he changes it. Uh, Wednesday night at Northwest Christian Fellowship. He is calling his bride now. Look around and say, I'm going to be his bride. Now, it doesn't just happen. He is, he is moving the body of Jesus Christ, which is everybody saved, into His bride. It's not all of the body, as we're going to see here in 25, moves into the bride. It is a group of people that say, I have eyes only for Jesus. I'm passionate about Him. And you have to say, I do. You, when some, when, when, for those of you that are married, been married, gotten married, uh, uh, the bridegroom asks you to marry him, although I know that can flip sometimes. But either way, one of you, usually the woman, has to say, I do. And so you have to, you have to sign on to Jesus and say, I want to get saved and be in your family. I want to be in your body, but I do to be in your bride. And then when you say, I do, he takes you through a process. To become a bride. Read up. I'm not going to go all into it today, but if you're interested to go deeper, just go Google. Google's amazing. 27 years ago, there was no Google. There was not even the Internet for another 10 years. All of you that are young, you can't fathom this. 27 years ago, we didn't even have cell phones. I got my first cell phone in 1999. That's crazy, isn't it? And I was a, maybe a couple years after they introduced them, but it was too expensive. And that was the old digital ones. And, I mean, the analog ones. And so, anyway, go Google Hebrew weddings. They were asked to be married, and then the bridegroom went off for a year to prepare the house. And then she would prepare herself. We are in that period right now. Jesus Christ is asking you to be married. He said, I must go and send the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit's what comes inside of you, as Ephesians 1 says. He is the seal of the inheritance to come. What's the inheritance? Don't think money. Don't think houses. Think the inheritance is intimacy to know Jesus Christ, to know Him. To know his heart. As Dustin told me this morning, he says this is the time that he's pulling the cork off of wells to get to know him. And he is doing that. And he said, I must go. And this meant something to the Hebrews 
back then that we don't understand. He said, I must go and prepare a house for you. Now, I know there's a physical house up there, I, I, I've heard and I assumed, but it is bigger than a house. I am preparing a place so that me and you can be close to one another, so that you can move in with me. We are in, so that was about a year period usually. We are in that year that's lasted 2,000 years. And it's going to last till he comes back at the second coming of Jesus Christ or the rapture or whatever your theology is. It's coming back or you die, one or the other. But he is preparing, and then after that year, they're going to have the marriage supper of the Lamb. Marriage supper back then lasted seven days. They were blowout parties. I don't know how the parents afforded it. I'm just trying. I got one daughter who's wanting to get married. We were talking about it yesterday. I'm just trying to figure out how we get that one day paid for. Amen. Have you ever seen such craziness? Let alone seven days of feasts and wine. It's not happening on my shift. I'd like it, but there ain't enough money for, for that to happen. We could come over and I can make tang over and over again, okay? I can turn water into Kool-Aid. That's the extent of my gift. But this is where we're at. And I'm telling you, I don't want to just be, get through the gate. I don't want to just be a body. I am saying I do. How many of you say I do today? Let's just pray 30 seconds. Jesus, we say I do to you. We say, I do. And we welcome the process of that year in Jesus' name. We've been talking about, amen, we've been talking about Jesus is doing three things. He's calling us for three things. Well, let me go ahead and read this, and we'll get back into that. When the end comes, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten bridesmaids. We know this is a metaphor, but it's given a bigger spiritual principle. They took their oil lamps and went to meet the groom. I'm going to go through this fairly fast because you can read and we've gone over it many times. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish bridesmaids took their lamps, but they didn't take any extra oil. The wise bridesmaids, however, took along extra oil for their lamps. Since the groom was late, all the bridesmaids became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, someone shouted, the groom is here. Come to meet him. Then all the bridesmaids woke and got their lamps ready. I'm telling you right now, Jesus Christ is calling Christianity his body, to come to meet him. Not to hear about him, not to talk about him, not to play church. He is saying, come to meet him. The wise bridesmaids took along extra oil for their lamps. This is a time to be building yourself up on the Holy Spirit. He is the key. The oil represents Holy Spirit. Let me let me um, scroll down here and find this quote I saw Got this week, the Christian Post, which is a big Christian news site. It's not like, you know, Washington Post or New York Post or New York Times. They did a study back in September. The study shows, in general, that that while I'm I'm quoting, a majority of America's self-identified Christians, including many who identify as evangelical, believe that God is all-powerful, all-knowing, and is the creator of the universe. More than half of these Christians in America reject a number of historical, biblical teachings and principles. Now listen to this. Including the existence of Holy Spirit. Christian Post September. You can go Google if you want. That blew my mind. But not really. It verifies what's going on with these ten bridegrooms. Half of them did not have the oil even though they had the lamp, which is the form of Christianity. I'm telling you, this, I know I hit it every week, but this is the defining feature of where we're at. He said, I'm sending you the Holy Spirit to comfort and teach you and to lead you all truth. As we were at last week in Esther, Esther is a metaphor for us to get ready to go in before the king. There was a servant named Hage, which was, was used to help teach her what the king liked, what to dress like, how to get ready during her year before she met the king. Hege is like the Holy Spirit today. And if we don't listen to Holy Spirit, and we're listening to Him here, this is more of a message to the big body of Jesus Christ, we will not be ready. We may have a lamp. We might have kept ourselves pure and a virgin. Because if you go on and read, uh, the half that didn't have oil said to the half that have oil, give us oil. And they said, we can't do it. You cannot 
I don't care how Pentecostal you are. I don't care how much you lay hands on people. You cannot impart the process of hearing Holy Spirit's voice and learning to walk with Him and how to apply it to your life by laying on of hands. Now, I'm a big believer of impartation. You can do deliverance through impartation, but you cannot lay hands on people. I heard the other week, somebody said, they came up and said, can you pray for maturity for me? And he goes, he was smart, he goes, no. You cannot impart maturity. You cannot impart character. You can impart a lot of things. Maybe you can impart the desire to get there, but you cannot impart it. But right now, the Holy Spirit, and get to the place they said they had extra oil. They were more than ready. What does that mean? Get up and pray. Start going, and if you pray in the Spirit, if you don't pray in the Spirit, come back here and if you want it, pray with me. We're going to pray for you. You get up every morning and you go, So you're right there. We've had people walk out just that six weeks ago somebody came in. It was a visitor. They walked out when I spoke in tongues. Bless them. I pray God, they're God's child. God's hand is upon them. But this is what I know. If you're afraid of Holy Spirit, that means you're not going to hear Holy Spirit except at a very low level. And it's going to be hard to move into getting ready for to be the bride of Christ. The first thing that has to die with Holy Spirit is fear. This area is full. Let's put it this way. Religion is scared of Holy Spirit. And that fear is demonic. And so maybe deliverance will start. You lay hands. Secondly, to be Holy Spirit, it humbles you. To pray in tongues is a humbling thing. But in Jude says, pray in tongues to build yourself up. There's a public tongues which requires interpretation. But I'm telling you, you need Holy Spirit because religion is the lamp that may have a good Goal may have a good desires, but without the Holy Spirit, it's good and it's not God. And that group will stay the body and not the bride. And our job here among each other is to keep other people encouraged and keep saying, I do. And to keep people other encouraged, say, did, did I hear what Holy Spirit said? If you, I forgot, you wanted to share, Julie. You can share after this. If, and if you have something cool to share, before the message each week, I was sort of focusing on making sure I didn't miss Amy. And so, um, and I passed that one, but I didn't pass yours. If you have a cool story of what he did that week, or a cool story of how he used it, come up to me after the break and the announcements will share those things. Because we need to hear, all of us hear from Holy Spirit, and he's moving us in that direction. And I'm telling you, as I talked about before the announcements, religion is dying in this place. Ancient wells have been opened up. When uh, when I was speaking to the leaders, the worship leaders at 6 before the, the vertical worship night, I said there are ancient wells in this area, and one of them is worship from 200 years ago of the Moravians. And it's not coming, it's here. For those of you that were here Friday night, there were 65, 70 people here from at least six different ministries. And they were going hard after Jesus. It wasn't about relationship church. It wasn't about a great worship leader. One of the worship leaders from another church started singing and started crying and got on his knees as he was playing. I'm telling you, the passion is growing. And it's here and I'm excited. Another one didn't cry, but he was up on the, the, the stage playing, and he starts wailing, God, I want more. And it wasn't just a song. It was a wailing that comes from deep inside. And so I challenge you every day, get up. Let me see if I can find this quote since I'm not following my notes. But he, as, as I'm trying to find this thing... Um, He's calling us to three things, and I've been bouncing around for several weeks. One, passion or his heart. Purity or holiness. We talked about that last week. We're going to come back again, hit it again because it is a big deal. Passion slash his heart, purity slash holiness. And then the third one, which we haven't even talked about, is purpose slash his hand. Three P's, three H's. And I'm telling you, he is calling. When it says, come to meet me, it starts with passion. 
and we, wherever passion is frowned upon, I mean, I've been in churches in the past where emotions is frowned upon. What does that tell you? You do not know Jesus beyond, much beyond the salvation or doctrine. It's the truth from personal experience. Let me give you an A.W. Tozer. He is as mainline as you get, okay? He's not a wild, charismatic, crazy Pentecostal person. A.W. Tozer, who's already passed on. But when we, when we really experience Jesus Christ, this is what we want to have happen here, vertical worship here, wherever you go out in the, the region. When we really experience Jesus Christ, we learn astonished reverence, breathless adoration, awesome fascination, and lofty admiration. The reverential fear of the Lord, mixed with love, fascination, astonishment, admiration, and devotion, is the most enjoyable state and the most purifying emotion the human soul we can know. So, as we go out, and as we're following the Lord and following the Holy Spirit, fill yourself up, pray in tongues. Paul says, I pray in tongues more than you all combined. That's got to be a lot. Pray in tongues and do not be embarrassed by it. I'm not talking about doing it at work, on your job, but do it underneath it, breath. What happens is he gives you wisdom, he gives you revelation, he gives you insight, and he'll be, sometimes you'll do it, you'll experience emotions. And when you experience emotions, you realize, okay, I'm starting to get close to Jesus, amen? You don't have to lose control. Not many, many years ago when I used to make fun of charismatics before I was one. I used to make fun of them and and go, they're just in the flesh. And some of the things I saw, they were in the flesh. Because we're all in the flesh. None of us is perfect. And the Lord, very quickly, he rebuked me. I wasn't even spirit-filled, but I heard his voice on this one. He rebuked me and said, you're in the flesh more than they are. He says, because you won't move. You won't raise your hands. Your emotions are not involved. And I just shut up. I mean, how do you argue against that? One looks good, but it's a lamp with no oil. Amen? How many of you have been feeling your lamps getting filled? You feel a call. I have got to have more. I almost got mad at God about six, eight weeks ago. I kept it from getting mad, but I was frustrated. And this is what I was praying, and he hasn't answered this prayer in six or eight weeks. I said, Lord, you tell us to be a friend of you. You tell us to be a bride of you. I am not satisfied with the level that I know you. I want to see you. I want to hear you. I want to know, not that I don't know you, just the level I know you. I was getting frustrated like a week. I was like, I'm not satisfied. You know, he never answered, and I had to guard my heart. And I finally, at the end of it, just said, I'm doing the best I know how. And there's an open invitation. If you won't show me, Holy Spirit, how to get to know Him more, and you get to know me more. And we know that He's going to answer that prayer. That's the, I want us to be dissatisfied. Be dissatisfied in a good way where we're at. Now, I'm going to give you, in the, just, we're going to start in a few minutes, ten minutes here, that I'm going to go on, or whatever. I don't do ten, because... I would be lying if I go over 10. So, I'm telling you, as you push into this and say, I'm going to fill my oil, what happens is, is he starts setting you up for your purpose. As you hear his voice, he starts hitting you up for for his hand, to walk hand in hand with him because you've already got your heart to do things. And you will hear from Holy Spirit and him more than you ever have. One of the bad, not a bad thing, it's not a bad thing, but a thing that could be so much better. In the charismatic church, I, I do a lot of reading, a lot of different news sites, a lot of different people, a lot of different, I mean, my family can say, every time I hear him, he's listening to somebody on a podcast somewhere, and so or reading somewhere. And I don't apologize for that, because I'm trying to learn from other people. i got to get fed and keep up. But this is what I've noticed. Most people are an echo, not a voice. I see this in the charismatic church. It actually needs to be broken. Where I'll hear somebody say something, and I know it's original, and I know they got it in the throne room, I know they got it in their time of God, and it's powerful and anointed. 
and it's good. Then within a week, I hear all these other copycat prophets, teachers, preachers saying the same thing. Sometimes they got it from God. A lot of times I can tell by the authority that they carry when they teach it, they're echoing it. Now that's okay as long as you give the credit for the echo. Like A.W. Tozer, that quote, I could have said it, said, isn't that a good quote? No, it came from A.W. Tozer. We're all a mixture of different people. We're interdependent. But don't say you got something from God when you didn't get it from God and you got it from prophet so-and-so or teacher so-and-so. And And that's okay. I do that all the time. Now, this is the point. He is wanting to bring the charismatic church forward and to give us more revelation. But we've got to get to the place where the revelation is not our identity. And we're not invited to conferences and we're not invited to speak here and speak there because of our revelation we heard from someone else. He is getting us and wanting us to pull us forward and we can give credit and be an echo, but He is wanting you to be a voice. He's wanting to give you your own revelation at work, on the business sites. I, I am convinced the biggest and best revelation that is coming is how to do business, how to raise your families, how to do marriage, how to change our... Well, the school system's pretty good in this county, but we're talking generically. How to change the school systems, how to change these things. He's wanting to give you a voice. And as we press in and say, Holy Spirit, I want to know you. I want you to introduce me to Jesus. I'm open to your wisdom and revelation. He will start giving you things to influence the society around you. Because Jesus not only wants to change the church, He wants to change arts, He wants to change entertainment, the government, schools, businesses. I was talking to Brian, I don't know, sometime in the past recent. And I said, because he's a businessman, owner part in his own business, no other people like Chad and different things. And so I just sort of went off, but I think it was God. I said, you're doing good. You make a good salary. But it's it, it, they, we keep here in other churches I'm in, the business people keep hitting a level, and they can't get past it. I'm telling you, God wants independently wealthy people out of the churches in this region. And the devil is fighting it like all get out. And But I, I'm glad they're making a good salary, but he's wanting independently wealthy because the kingdom needs those resources, their family needs those resources, other things need those resources. And it's not just about, you know, getting more wealthy. And But it's going to take revelation and wisdom and insight from Holy Spirit to give new solutions. And he's he's going to do it. It's going to happen. We're standing and believing for prosperity, that we have more to to give than we know where to give. Amen? And so it's going to happen, and the devil's fighting this thing. And so um, John 7, 38 says this, He who believes in me, as the Scripture said, from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. Water is representative of his word. He is going to give us word. How many of you... You know you need more Word. I'm not just talking written Word. Thank God we believe in a God. That when He got His book written, which I don't have a book here, it's on the iPhone, He didn't stop talking. Let that sink in. Thank God that when He wrote His book, He didn't stop talking. And He cares about those family situations that may be tough, Marriage situations, whatever. Work situations that may be tough. I'm telling you, living... Let's stand. I'm going to pray. Then you're going to sit back down. Because we need a release of an increase of the Holy Spirit. Y'all feel that? Why don't somebody come up here and do a guitar or hum or get the harmonica or piano or something. And then I may stop you in a minute, but just stay there. We'll pick it back up again in a minute. (laughs) I know that wasn't on the bulletin I gave you this morning. Let's just close. Well, whatever you want to do. Whatever you got to do to get in the presence of the Lord.